students today's lesson is a prose piece titled performers let's look at the objectives learning objectives and outcomes the objectives are to think analytically and inferentially to feel experientially the outcomes are to appreciate the writer's style to comprehend and observe the character's journey and to feel and connect with the character and think and evaluate one's own goals in life sounds interesting doesn't it let's now meet the writer who is none other than the legendary rugby player john, um, barry john currently aged 75 years he has donned many hats a pe teacher a rugby player columnist a sports program presenter his words you throw it i'll catch it has become one of the famous rugby quotes you can click on a link which is seen on your screen which will open up a short uh, video titled me and my teacher wherein you can watch um, the legend barry john spending some time with ray williams his inspirational sports teacher moving on to the next slide you will see you will see some vocabulary on the screen uh, like put uh, one on a pedestal be tickled in anities thick and fast adulation button hold all these uh, words or idioms are taken from the text the images that are associated with these words gives you an insight into the meaning in fact when you read the text you will have a better or a clearer understanding of these following words moving on to the next slide it's an introduction uh, it has a question having been told that a major role in the drama having been told that a major role in the drama even promised to you earlier is now being given to another student from your class what will you miss the most an experience or an opportunity of 10 minutes of fame quite thought provoking question isn't it let us now proceed to read the text fame Barry John was a remarkable rugby player who retired from the game at the height of his success in the early 1970s. In this extract from his autobiography, he explains some of his reasons for quitting the game. I became famous and I must admit that I liked it up to a point. But people began to put me on a pedestal and writers started calling me a legend in his own lifetime, a phrase that gave me the creeps, perhaps because it seemed to wrap me up and file me away i had no wish to be a legend i wanted to be me i am a perfectly ordinary individual from an ordinary background let me make myself clear i don't want to sound ungrateful or selfish or arrogant and i don't want to upset anyone rugby has helped me enormously and has given me my life a fabulous dimension after all i was a teacher and i enjoyed teaching but i could not have lived the life i do today even in the purely material sense on a teacher's salary rugby has given me many things people have done much for me and the rugby ball has certainly bounced very kindly for me but boy has it brought pressures at first it was all fun what boy wouldn't be tickled at the sight of his name in the local paper and it was and it was there, there almost every week in the carmarton journal where i played for sefnathan and lianini it was fun when i began playing for wales but in the last year of my playing career and particularly when i got back from new zealand the pressures became more and i could more than i could stand when i got home, when i got home the invitations came in thick and fast to dinners lunches meetings parties receptions all kind of social events the former simplicity of my life was suddenly altered i disliked disappointing people and i knew that i owed the welsh rugby supporters an unpayable debt for their goodwill and support and in this time of great triumph 
for Welsh rugby, I felt a duty to go out and meet as many people as possible. But somehow, in some mysterious metamorphosis, I had been changed from a rugby player into a star. There was an endless round of personal appearances and I had invitations from societies, clubs and organizations of all kinds, about 30 invitations in a week. I even had one from a Bajgarga society. My house, my sorry, my home life began to suffer and I became a lodger in my own house, darting in to put on a clean shirt before hurrying off to the next engagement. To an extent, my wife and little daughter became strangers. Jan said to me several times, why don't you talk to me anymore? But I hardly knew what she meant. I was getting home at one or two o'clock in the morning, going off to do a day's work and then spending the evening at a function. Eventually, I grew to loathe about talking about rugby. I developed the knack of giving an after dinner type of speech to suit any kind of occasion. But after that, I did not want to discuss the game. Everywhere I went, people buttonholed me and brought up the hated subject. How many, how, how did you get that penalty, that try? What was X like? Endless inanities. I began to scream inwardly. I craved conversation about other topics and I was grateful to the few people who, when they approached for a chat, steered clearly, steered clear of rugby. I began to feel guilty that this was my reaction. Taking part in a small talk, I could hear the words leaving my lips, but they were, but they were processed and said without feeling. I began to feel I was cheating people, that I did not care, that I was dishonest and that I, was, I had been turned into a kind of circus act. It began to worry me that the adulation was alienating me from the human race. In a crowd at the National Eisted Ford, I was talking to people when I heard my mother tell, when I heard a mother tell her small son to touch my hand. Well, I suppose that it is a compliment, but I'm no, I'm not a god or a prince or a healer, but a man. Occasionally, I had the curious sensation of not being in my own body, of looking at it as if it was some kind of robot. I was Barry John, the rugby star and machine. The real Barry John had stepped outside for a while. In the year of up to my retirement from the game, I saw my doctor many times than in all the other years of my life put together. And I got into the habit of having a few drinks late at night as a drug to get me off to sleep. The demands were unbearable. Leaving rugby had nothing to do with the game itself. The very thought of playing a match made my body, made my blood race just as it did when I was a schoolboy. But family life had become impossible and I could not have continued life this leading this kind of a life for many more months. I would have been doing no justice to myself, to my family, my firm, the Welsh team or the devoted followers of Welsh rugby. In the end, I would have let everyone down. From the Barry John story and autobiography. Wasn't that a peep into um, Barry John's life story? I'm sure it was. Let's look at the next slide, which gives you a bird's eye view of the plot line. We begin with Barry John was a teacher who enjoyed teaching. Then moving on, playing rugby brings him to the into the limelight. Initially, it was fun. Eventually, he got a lot of invitations to social events and gatherings. He realized that from a rugby player, he had become a star. The pressures followed. Social obligations for personal appearances increased. To become a rugby player was a choice he had made, but his family life suffered and it also affected his health. Barry found it difficult to keep up with the personal appearances. He also began to load talking about rugby all the time. He had to take a call. He decided to quit the game. 
he was content with his decision as he felt if he had continued to play then he would let everybody down definitely this slide gives you a snapshot of the um, story or, or of the snapshot of the text now on a lighter note you can watch um a welsh uh, you can watch a video you can watch a video wherein you can see um many other um, well, uh, rugby legends along with uh, barry john moving on the last part uh, of today's session is a formative assessment wherein you have uh, uh, you have about five questions that you have to attempt and uh, answer you can read the lesson one more time you can read the text one more time and then come back and answer these questions also there is a short key for some of the questions over there with this we come to an end of session 1 um i hope you had a um, uh, le good learning experience bye have a nice day